Are you an entrepreneur or ready to become a boss? Welcome to Hawaii Boss, the business podcast made in Hawaii, where you will hear from island movers and shakers on who they are and their impact on our state. And now, step into the office of your host for Hawaii Boss, David Pettyjohn. Aloha, Hawaii Boss podcast crew listening in as you do every time we have a episode because we're trying to go into the boss's office and find out a little bit more how we in Hawaii and doing business and doing business right and also how we get through this pandemic and into the future but also as we try to come out of this lockdown or different things we've been kind of cooped up our health has been doing some weird things with the COVID and everything so we're fortunate to go into the business uh, office uh, today of Jason Aquino who is the at F45 gym as a studio manager. It's really a great concept. Uh, I'm a member, so you know, uh, it's it's very cool. And Jason was the first guy that you know kind of showed me around. And and so Jason, welcome. And we're gonna we're excited to have you to be in your office today. Awesome and great to be here. Right I'd on. rather be in your office over there at the beach. Hey, you know, <laughs> um, me too. <laughs> oh yeah, I can feel the sand in my uh, yeah my toes here. Nice uh, sunset there. <laughs> I'm a little early, but uh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm about ready to head. I'll head down after this, you know. Perfect. Uh, I'll join you. Okay. Uh, so, Jason, tell us a little bit about, as a studio manager, again, this F45 concept. We're all curious about it. We're seeing it kind of up and around. There's been some media about it and things. And, and as a studio manager, you know, what's this concept? It's a gym, but it's different. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I get I feel a lot of calls from people interested in coming and checking us out. You know, we have the banner on the side of the road and people are seeing the ads on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, obviously it doesn't it looks more than just a gym. And uh, what what makes it more unique than any other gym is that we have our workouts all programmed. Right. And, and it's time. So there's no really room to lollygag and, you know, go around and talk to people and kind of lose lose your focus on training it's 45 minutes so f45 f stands okay for functional, all right functional fitness which is uh like hit training hit stands for high intensity interval training mm-hmm. and uh, we focus on cardio specific workouts and strength and resistance workouts so you really get uh, the best of both worlds mm-hmm. in our program and uh yeah 45 is 45 minutes so you're in and out in 45 minutes so a lot of people busy, you know, with work, such as yourself. They mm-hmm. need something to help them manage their time. And especially if you're in leadership, you know how important time management is. So right. That's uh, the, uh, exactly. Change. Yeah, you got to. Uh, and, and but you still need to maintain your health in order to keep that sort of uh, schedule and the, the busyness and things. So I feel it is like a uh, an executive or but it's, it's not limited to that. It's these are sort of that's what I like about it. It's functional fitness. It's not like you're not going in and and uh, slamming weights and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, it's all movement to your natural body movement. And uh, so tell yeah. us how that, how that, you know, from the old style of, you know, going in, I'm gonna do, you know, my three sets of bench presses and my squats, and then I'm gonna be out. What's the difference now with, you know, with this, these planned functional, um, you know, exercises? You know, I mean, take it back to high school. That's when I first started uh, weight training for football and, uh, yeah, you know, you're always working on big movements. So your big muscles, like your chest, everybody wants a big chest, right? Your hey, legs, what's your max? What's your, hey, Kino, what's your yeah. max? <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> right. Uh, and so, you know, you're trying to push your max bench press. And uh, of course, we all know the favorite, uh, curls for the girls, right? That's right. <laughs> so you gotta the get short, those yeah, the high. short t-shirts, yeah, you know. Sun's yeah. out, sun's out, guns out. Uh, as high school, you know, high school young men, we must be incredibly, in, you know, difficult to deal with. But yeah, we all had that idea. Uh-huh. Exactly. Uh-huh. So it's it's like taking that that idea and just crushing it, and and honestly, just focusing on functional, like every movement you're going to use within life. Like if you're going to pick up a heavy box, lift it up and put it over overhead, you need to learn proper form because injury takes place. You know, how many times right. have you? buddy move and uh, had to pick up a big huge couch and maybe weren't picking it up right and you pulled your back out uh, right. so here focus on uh your the dynamics on, on on your form is the biggest thing that we look out for and we haven't had anybody get injured so far um and it's mainly because our coaches are looking for proper form and if we see somebody picking up say doing a deadlift and uh, their their back is arched. We're gonna go over there on the spot and do right. form correction. 
Yeah. So that's what's unlike any other gym. You're, you're actually almost getting the personal trainer type of a feel in a group setting. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's group classes. You got to book a class to get in. You know, and we have a limited amount of spots, but once you book a class, there's that accountability. So accountability for one, uh -huh. because once you put something up, you got to show up, right? So that's the big part. And then um, getting a workout that's planned for you, it's in and out, 45 minutes, but you're gonna you're gonna actually get a major workout in that 45 minute time. And you're you're not really focused on and lifting your heaviest. You're focused on uh, building that muscle and working all the different muscle groups within right. one. Right, because then you get sort of a, a functional exercise, again, a functional fitness sort of foundation. Uh, yes. And then you can build off of that because I noticed, you know, as you go to each of the areas where you're, you're working out, again, having access to the coach is great. Uh, but then there's different, you can modify the exercise depending upon your health uh, ability. Yeah. So you can go from just body weight to, you know, if you're some of these guys I see in there that are doing these functional exercises, but really lifting some heavy weight too. It's a, that's a real kind of, I think what is the goal of our health, not necessarily to be the biggest in the, but to be able to, to really move under this kind of duress, you know? Yeah, that's correct. So, yeah. um, you know, how, when you, when it has that modification there, so someone who's new, you know, how would you, you know, how is the coaching, uh, you know, helping out, you know, that person? Yeah, so first off, we meet everybody that comes through the door and, and, and that person, luckily for me, is me. You know, I get right. to feel the calls, bring them in and we do uh, what we call a consultation. So this is a time where I can meet with a potential member, anybody who's interested, you know, doing uh, the workouts and, and uh, just to let everybody know out there, we give a week for free. So mm -hmm. that week gives you a time span to understand the program, feel it out for yourself and really see if this is something that you want to do. Uh, during that consultation, I'll go over uh, some key questions for them. I'll, I'll find out what their goals are because, you know, that way I can understand each person has their own goals and everybody needs a goal uh, and in leadership especially, right? So right. we find out what the goals are and then we go from there, I kind of piggyback off your goals and say somebody wants to lose 20 pounds and they want to have um, better mental health or just relieve stress because of the times we're in. Uh, so, you know, it's a great thing or they want to meet people, they want to network. There's, there's, there's a gamut of, of, of things that people are looking for. Sure. I get to field all that and then I'm, you know, I make note of those. I pass on some, some of the information to the coaches. Uh, we also ask, you know, what type of injuries, if there's any, you know, injuries or underlying health conditions that uh, people are suffering through. Uh, then that way we can know how to modify. So say if somebody right. just had a knee surgery, uh, maybe it's on their ACL and um, that was like, yeah, you know, they had about, they just recovered maybe about four months ago. They right. want to get back to working out. Um, obviously doing some jump tucks or jumping or any impact right. to their knee wouldn't be the best exercise for them. So knowing that I'm also able to jot that down, let the coaches know. Mm -hmm. uh, so the coaches are aware of everybody where they're at if it's an injury there, they can get with that person, and modify the movements, and then keep them injury free. Uh, because, you know, of course, you, you don't want them to get re injured, and we want them to feel like they can keep up with the class at their own pace. Sure. And that's an important thing to note because it used to be like, okay, you're injured, you're out, no exercise, nothing. But we're learning now that with an injury, yeah. if you keep the rest of your body going, you know, you still keep right. that, maintain that as much as possible. That sort of brings that injured part along, you know, the health. Uh, it's an interest. Yeah. I mean, there's more science that's coming out about it, but it's very interesting that, you know, just, just stopping all together, you really go backwards. Oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. There is definitely a time for rest and recovery, but you know, we don't want to just take that in months down the road. And then now you're, you know, back to square one. So right. yeah, we, we definitely encourage you to just keep moving the body, just keep moving the body and uh, go at your own pace. And we modify all the workouts. And then that way we can take somebody because uh, we also have the highest level of um, athleticism too in here. You know, we have like, sure. a lot of the UH uh, basketball team, the volleyball players come through, professional surfers like Carissa Moore and mm -hmm. um, to name a few. Uh, we have the high elite athlete. And then we also have somebody just off the street who's never trained before. Sure. And they can all integrate in this type of training and still get a great workout, whatever whatever um you know wherever you're at in your journey yeah so yeah that's what's that's what's nice if i can add you know when 
you know, the, my gym experience in the past, you know, either it's CrossFit or whatever it is, it's really difficult to really gain access. You know, you go through the introductory part, but gain access to that coaching, you know, the people who know what to do. Sometimes, hey, you know, in passing, but it's not really part of the plan, you know, it's kind of, well, it's sort of an afterthought. Hey, looking pretty good over there with that, you know, deadlift. Oh, try this a little bit, but, and, yeah. you know, you varying degrees of, of success with that. But yeah, those folks that are, that are really on, and, and there's so many different exercises. Tell me how many different exercises that, you know, they, they put them together, together in different, you know, uh, pace and different, uh, it's just yeah, amazing yeah. What, how, how they do it, you know. Oh, yeah, there's over uh, 4,000 combinations of workouts that we have. Uh -huh. access. And, and it's all the workouts are designed by elite pro athletes and coaches. Right. And Olympic coaches. So you're taking the best of the best from around the world and, and, des and combine together in a design program for each specific day. And, right. and, and the other thing that's great about it, it's, it's, it's basically mindless training. And that's yeah, a, one type it. of training that really, really um, – Helps because you know it's good to have a plan, but when you come in and you, you're not too sure what what you're gonna do, you kind of just get in there and do it, you know. And right. um, there's not this time of like, oh, I'm I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this much sets. It's everything's timed out for you, uh, so you can come in as busy as you are and not have to think of what you want to do. You're just gonna come in. The program's there for you. So yeah, like a mindless training. Come in, do the workout in your house. Yeah, a lot of athletes do that. They'll do a training camp. Everything's kind of mapped out for, for everybody, exactly. you know. Um, and so you can engage your own yourself into a sort of a training camp of whatever goal you're trying to uh, accomplish. And if you're focused on, listen, I'm going to get four days a week in. Here's the ones I'm going to hit. Here's my rest time. It's all there for you. You know, you don't have to sort of get in your journal and sort of, you know, figure out, you know, all of that and then how much weight you want to use and, and all of that. And by the time right. you get done with that, you don't even make it out to the gym, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, a lot takes all that planning piece out, which is a big part of, of that. But there's also, um, I noticed sort of as an augmentation, you know, where health, you know, the exercise piece is really important, gets that foundation, but there's also some nutrition component. How does that work? There's some uh, different activities that uh, the gym does? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, first off, everybody on staff is um, personal trainer certified. So we all need our certifications to even be a part of the, the coaching staff and, and staff here. And so there's a lot of um, there's a lot of knowledge, a lot of years in knowledge. And we have a lot of people who specifically went to school, you know, um, for nutrition and for physical fitness and, and whatnot. So there is a lot of knowledge and that knowledge just comes from our staff. And so if there's uh, something like, you know, some 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 guy, you know, Skinny Joe just comes in and he's really wanting to build muscle. He burns fat a lot, but just can never pack on the muscle. Um, we'll dive into uh, nutrition for him, you mm -hmm. know, just as well we'll dive into nutrition with somebody who wanted to lose a lot of weight. Uh, because um, what we do, first off, we do what we call an in-body scanner. Mm -hmm. And that in-body scan can measure the amount of uh, percentage of your body fat and your skeletal muscle mass. And it just gives you a wide range of where your body is so that we know where your starting point is. And then that way, if it's like, if his skeletal muscle mass is low, then we can say, hey, this is where we have to we have to spike this up. We have to get this going. So what we want to do is you need to be here for the strength days. Uh, you need to look at your, your lean body mass and, and equivalent that to uh, your pounds to grams of protein. Mm -hmm. and so you make sure that you're eating this much protein too because protein feeds the muscles. So yeah, otherwise you're doing all this exercise. You're not eating, eating enough protein, and so there's no muscle build. It just wastes every time. Exactly. Uh -huh. you know as you I mean? work, as you work harder, it's even it shrinks even more. Right, right, right. Yeah, to feed the muscles, you know, and right. feed it with proper proper nutrition, right? Proper food. Mm -hmm. So, um, when we also do uh, what we offer here is the F forty five challenge, and we've had great results. I've heard Shane, um, our owner, um, over F forty five Hawaii, he uh, loves to tell everybody this. Um, out of the three sites that um, he's part owner of and owns the Kapolei and, and here in Kahala. Out of F45 Kahala, F45 Kapolei, and um, F45 Hawaii Kai, mm -hmm. there was a total of 3,000 pounds lost in weight during this challenge overall. Wow. And a total of 652 pounds of muscle increase. Wow. Out of all the three studios with the F45 challenge. Right. And so... I mean, it's incredible results for a short period of time. Uh, 
we're going to be launching our, our next challenge, challenge 35 at January 31st. And okay. uh, this one's going to be eight weeks. So it's eight week challenge. And within that eight week time, you're going to have um, group access. Uh, you're going to, you're going to work with a team of members and an individual coach over your team. And then you're going to have the accountability through text that you're training and then also nutritional advice. And then right. we have a challenge that, that shows you, gives you like a shopping list on what you should shop for. Sure. Foods you should, your body type. Mm -hmm. uh, so it dives right into that nutrition uh, aspect of that. So it's just a fun way to have the accountability, work with other members as a team, have a coach over you, you know, guiding you and answering mm -hmm. any questions. And then, um, you know, you have that goal and then that eight weeks, you could win, you could win the challenge. We do fun little prizes and stuff like that too. So. Yeah, I noticed there's some competitive folks. Again, there's some real athletes there, but even but they're so welcoming. They're not like you know us them. You know, here's the here's our uh, you know our, our super athletes, and then the guys over here. You know, it's sort of like we all. That's why it feels like they call it a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's our model. Uh -huh. Team training, life changing. Uh -huh. Team training, life changing, and and we've seen we've seen major results from that, and it, right. it's true. We can we can say that. Um, with a hundred percent assuredness, you know, that we do focus on that right. because you get that team when you come in and you're working out next to people, you get that sense of family. And, and that's, right. we, you know, our focus has always been in, in, in every, um, every position that I've been in was always focused on community, mm -hmm. you know, just community relationships. I think that's the key with business is to, to really dive into each person, to get to know them, to make them feel like they're part of a family, part of an ohana. And then that, from there, once you feel like a belonging to something, mm -hmm. it, just, it just helps, right? It helps right. helps you to move forward and, and know that you have others that are, are looking out for your best interests. So there's really no ego. I haven't, I haven't ever experienced anybody coming in thinking like they're the, the, the baddest person in, in the place. Right. Just, there's room for that, right? Right. And the exercises, too, can challenge them at their, at their the most elite yeah. folks. Right. So right. they don't have time to they don't have time to be, you know, talking about the last, you know, uh, set of, you know, burp, you know, 100 burpees they did, you know, or whatever they did. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So, yeah, that's that's cool. So, again, that looking at the whole person and and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, some people as they're they're ath athletic. Did you know from when you were young that this is what you you wanted to do? You wanted to be, uh, uh, you know, into health or, you know, what what path? Sort of, what was the thing that turned it for you? Actually, I mean, I, I was always into, you know, activities and sports, played football, surfed and did all that. But I wasn't really, really into it until I had to go through my own, like, um, valley, so to speak. Sure. Because I was working a job um, as an executive, working like some upwards to like 70 hours a week. Right. And just on the computer, just basically did not carve the time for myself. Right. And this went on for years and um, just got a little health care with high blood pressure. I was 20 pounds overweight. Right. And, um, you know, I was already so I, I was training in martial arts since I was young. But during this time, during this job, I, I literally put my training on hold mm -hmm. and I went from being pretty fit to now just completely. I just let myself go because I was just so engulfed in work. I didn't. Right. It was my fault because I didn't manage time or cut out time. Right. For myself. So important, as you know. Right. You know, so if you don't make time for yourself, eventually you're going to start to deteriorate. You know, you're if without your health, you're no good anywhere. You're no good for your job. You're no good for your family. Right. You know, so it was it was it was that wake up call for me. And uh, when I when I went to the doctor's office and he said, hey, buddy, you know, I think the best thing for you would just be start walking right now. I was super humbling coming from where I, where I just was, say, five right. years before that. Uh, so Plus, when you were growing up, way. too, you, you were out in the water surfing. You know, you didn't have any problem. You could run, you know, halfway across the island or whatever, and it was just go, 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 yeah. right? And then all of a sudden, yeah. you know, you're in this sort of, well, you know, maybe it's middle age. I think it happens to, to mm -hmm. all of us. There's a point where, you know, we get so busy with our life, we forget, you know, our bodies, you know, because we're right. so far in our heads. And, uh, but then our yeah. body has a way of sort of catching up and talking back to us if we're paying attention, even in a little bit, you know, or, the, or that wake-up call at the doctor, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, so that's what, um, 
pushed me into a season of, of getting back to it. Mm -hmm. And then through that, it's just, um, yeah, we just kind of met through um, with training. I was getting back into jujitsu and I was actually getting ready for a uh, competition. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called the uh, world's it's a world competition where you have to like, I mean, you really got to, I mean, I was running. Oh yeah. And yeah, yeah. Crazy stuff. Yeah. I've seen guys, and, I've seen guys who are doing, uh, you know, uh, what are they called? Sit-ups uh, hanging upside down from a, you know, punching bag. You know, these guys were, you know, for a hundred of them, you know, just like, boom, someone's hitting them at the same time. You know, it's like, what is these guys are, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not at that level, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was, yeah, that's how, that's how I got back into it. And uh, this, this was CrossFit at the time. And Shane, who was a buddy of mine, we used to work together when I was, uh, I used to manage Dukes, Waikiki. Oh, okay. Back in the day, in the 90s. And uh, so we, were, we, were, we made friends back then. And then his son was going with my son to school. And then we kind of reconnected, found that he's like, hey, come down and train. So uh, when I had to get ready for, for the comp, I, I, I hit him up and started training. And, you know, just through our relationship here, one thing led to another and then he said he offered me a position here and said hey i'd love for you to come on and you know right you know, so you were already working next door in the business that you had developed already um on this, this, this yeah space. yeah on the on the can yeah no, in, in kahala not yet. tell us that story no. what's that tell us that story how did that work out with your your i mean you have this this love of uh, jujitsu and that helped you get back your health and and thanks. Yeah. Tell us, you know, how that goes. Uh, sounds like maybe hand in hand with your other, your current thing with Shane. Yeah, no, we, um, we decided just, it's been a year since we opened up the school here. So this used to be like a CrossFit kind of a uh, focused place. And, uh, we decided to, to switch gears and offer boxing and jujitsu here. Okay. So we got the boxing and then, uh, we have our Sojourn Jiu-Jitsu and Sojourn is under Otto Sunlulu and, Island Jiu Jitsu. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, we just started a program, wanted to start a program for people who would um, want to try Jiu Jitsu, but just maybe either felt intimidated to go into, you know, just some school. Um, and then also like a very basic beginner program where people can grow up. And so we've been here for a year and it's been amazing. Yeah, absolutely amazing. So the thing, the thing, David, was I got my, I just got my black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu after 14 years of training. Sure. Consistently. And um, when I got my black belt, I said, well, am I going to compete or am I just going to hold that knowledge in and just train for myself? Or am I going to take a step out and actually use it to now pass on to others, you know? And, uh, you know, that was the challenge. And so I, I, I jumped up to the challenge said, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to make that my focal point. I'm going to use what I know now. And I'm going to just share that with others. Mm -hmm. So great. It's, honestly, it's been life changing for the students I have in here as well. And uh, it's, it's kind of uh, it coincides and blends well with F45. Sure. So, yeah, they sort of complement each other. Uh, exactly. Uh -huh. Because of the functional fitness and the movements, you know, it's anaerobic activity. It's up and down and you're moving your body. And same thing with jujitsu. You, you need you're, you're up and down and all around and, you know, people are folding you up and you're folding other people up. <laughs> right. Well, I have to say the worst part of uh, jujitsu is the warm ups. You know, when they're oh. they're rolling in the hall and they're, you know, duck walking down the thing and you're, you know, uh, you know, and, and then they're like, hey, that's just a warm up, you know, half an hour later. <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And yeah. doing j jumps and rolls and stuff like that. Yeah, I've seen it. It's uh, it's heavy. Yeah. And it, it is a lot of that, that blood pressure up and down. You really got to be able to be fit to handle all that. Yeah. Yeah. So but but you well. say it sounds like you say it starts slow for some of those folks. You're not having to work them like, you know, you're not turning them into the world champions uh, right off. Yeah, not yet. Not yet. Uh -huh. yeah. I have a couple couple students that are ready and they're going to test themselves uh, in March at the next Hawaii Triple Crown for their first uh, comp. So sure. On. Yeah. Well, very popular in, in Hawaii. And uh, we had. Uh, Cavarinha, uh, the family of uh, Cavarinha, the, oh, the, he was on the, the podcast and, you know, he's he's trying to do the same thing. You know, he wants to help. That's the whole thing is a lifestyle thing that he's trying to provide. But he also talked about, uh, you know, how do the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, you know, different uh, camps in Hawaii get together and create some a bit of a voice for Hawaii? Because he says a lot of the competitions are all mainland, you know, the, to get in the mix mm -hmm. of 
of uh, you know the the guys who are practicing over here and to get over there and then they're in that same group of that whole large state of California. There's not really a you know they get kind of lost in the shuffle. So if, if Hawaii had right. his own voice, so I don't know how to how to do that. But you know what are some of the challenges of you know promoting uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu here in Hawaii? Uh, I think it's you know um, I think it's starting to really open up more. I know mm-hmm. before you know it was. A, there's a lot of politics and, um, you know, you train there, you train there, um, and don't train anywhere else kind of thing. Right. You right. For school. Um, yeah. These are the, uh, approved schools of, uh, of, uh, uh, I guess, uh, moving up the, uh, jujitsu hierarchy. Right. Exactly. Uh-huh. Right. And I, I feel like now, especially with more, you know, more black belts being promoted here in mm-hmm. Hawaii, and just the popularity, you know, in general as a whole, um, you're starting to see a little bit more people going out, you know, and, and, and stopping by another school or, you know, going and rolling in another open mat and, and right. it's just a little bit more fighting too. Yeah, I, I've got some friends that own a shop called Keikoa Collective. It's a company and they're great. They, they're an awesome, awesome group of guys. And uh, their big thing is just all inclusive. Like you come to the store, you can shop for some stuff and they have mat space there. And it's actually okay. right next to a 45 all Moana. Okay. So yeah, so, yeah just, share. yeah. Opening up the, those opportunities for different health. So some people can't go to a gym and just kind of work it out and do that. You know, this, I think uh, martial arts provides a great way and it has for me, you know, I took some judo in high school and, and some different yeah. things. It's, it, you know, martial arts has always been a great avenue for people to approach health. Uh, but also oh, if they're maybe a little bit uh, cerebral, you know, they can, uh, they like to, you know, it's something different than just, you know, clanging the weights around. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's, it just feels like a, a, ma- a match made in heaven with the, the two, the two things. And, and you've, you've mm-hmm. got into this career uh, path and it's sort of your, your future uh, with mm-hmm. Shane and, and you can, I guess, sky's the limit. What, where do you see as we're coming out of this pandemic for you and for, you know, uh, what kind of growth would you like to see in 2022 and, and uh, high expectations are still kind of saying, uh, let's see what happens. You know, um, great question. And we've been, this pandemic is lasting too long. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can all raise our hand and agree to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> two weeks below the spread to the, you know, over, over two years and, um, you know, we've, we've stuck with it. We're still in business and we've been through everything from the multiple shutdowns and, and the constant mandates that keep, um, you know, reappearing. Um, and, and, and a lot of the fear for a lot of people, you know, being in the space and working out with people side by side. But what I'm realizing a lot more now is that um, people are more open, you know, um, the mo- it, it's, it's crazy. Everybody I, that, that calls me or comes in for the first time, um, I would say about 80% of those people coming in to do a trial, um, when I ask them like, oh, what have you been doing for training? That's one of the questions I ask. Right. And they usually say, well, I haven't done anything for like the past couple of years because of COVID. You know? right. um, so they've, they've lost that and they're looking to gain that back. Right. And the majority of them, when they come in and they, they do the workouts here and they realize the program and what we offer, they just, it just, hands down some of the best things for them and uh what's great about that it's also helping their mental health too right so um my my goal all of our goal is to get f45 back to where we were Mm -hmm. pre-covid we've been trying to like just stay in business for you know the first through you know year and and we have to try to we have to flex and and move with how this thing was operating and all the mandates when we got shut down we still continued on with zoom training sure we did this with a group of you know like say 100 people on zoom sure. they're all doing workout uh-huh. workout here while they're doing it at home right remember that <laughs> everybody couldn't leave the house that's so right we, oh man we, that was crazy uh-huh. so we withstanded that i think that was like three months and uh and we did all body weight stuff so it was crazy right. and then they offered um us to um, be able to go and meet uh, i think it was like a, no more than groups of 10 in the park Right, right. Five or ten. So what we did was we held outdoor park workouts, and, okay. and we still kept the team going. But we did outdoor park workouts, and then it was like, wow! It was like people were so excited just to see people, you know? Right. Oh <laughs> Other yeah. Other than their members, right. and uh, so, so then we with 
We stood that during that time, and then we're able to reopen again. We reopened and so on and so on. So I feel like we've been trying to maintain and then slowly build. And then we, you know, we got shut down again and build back up. And now I think we're at a time where we, we want to just keep moving forward. Sure. No matter what, you know, we're resilient, we're hopeful, and we know that what we're offering is something that's, you know, it's, it's life changing for people. So, well, I can attest uh, attest to that. I was down a little bit with uh, the 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 COVID thing that was uh, going around, and then the holidays and uh, everything. But again, that's what was nice. I came back, could get halfway through the exercise, and you guys were still cool. Like, hey, you know, we get it. We've been there, you know, and uh, and uh, real helpful. So uh, so excited. To, yeah, it makes it fun to get back. And there's so many options as far as times. You know, there's morning times. You know, before you get on your commute or whatever. And that one's usually full, you know, like uh, you could probably do a four o'clock one, then you'd probably fill it up. But uh, yeah. uh, and so, yeah, in the afternoons, too, up till, you know, three or four different options uh, and even a couple midday as you're going through the week. It's um, and on weekends, too. So it's, uh, man, really, uh, really a great model. And uh, so I'm hopeful for you guys, too, that uh, that, you know, 2022 goes your way and and uh, and, and things keep going. But uh but before we, hey, before we let you go, Jason, we, we always want to know a little bit more about our folks. I saw, you know, as I was looking up myself on Instagram, you know, in you know, front of the waves with your surfboard, you know, tell us where, you, where your, <laughs> tell us where your spot is, or you have a secret spot, or you know, uh, you know. Yeah, I do have a secret spot, so I can't okay. say that. We won't tell that. Uh, east side, east side, north side. Uh, well, yeah, I grew up on the east side, so uh -huh. a lot of lot of spots on the east side. Uh, but right now, I live right up the hill, closer to Diamond Head, so. You know, when I do get a chance, it's so close, you know, from work here, uh, you know, it's mostly during the summer when, when the sun goes down at eight, I'll, I'll catch some, you know, sunset surf and surf out of cliffs you know, sure. or, or all the other areas that I, I can't really name. Suey's, you know. Right. Like just that. a place, you know, you know how to get there. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, there's a lot, you know, I grew up and learned how to bodyboard on the big island. But uh, so oh, there's lots sick. of spots. Uh, there's lots of spots I don't know on the on the uh, east side over there. I know there's some cherry spots that are like, you know, full on barrel. I hear about them, but I'm like, you know, which which beach do I, you know, where do I park and how, you know, which neighborhood do I walk through to get to that spot? You know, still having to learn that stuff, but. Where, which part of the island are you from? Well, I, um, I, we went, my parents were bakers and, and they moved yeah. over there. My mom wanted to be somewhere warm and work. And so they ran a bakery over there uh, when I was uh, eighth grade through 10th grade uh, oh, wow. on, in Kona uh, oh, on yeah, the big yeah. island, yeah. And so, but yeah, it's, it's great. I went to Konawina school, but, um, I started finding there were other things to do besides go up the hill to the school. I was going down to the beach and, you know, uh, bodyboarding. Yeah. So my parents moved to Oregon and took me with them. I didn't want to go, uh, but, uh, but so, so yeah, that helped me to graduate high school. And, and so, yeah, I just came back like eight years, uh, ago, uh, back to Kona. And then we lived on the, the East side on, in, in Hilo. So, uh, cool. big, uh, big heart out for uh, for the big island but we're learning oahu now last couple of years and and uh, we like it here too different pace different yeah yeah mm -hmm. so you're from uh where are you fr uh from on the islands here uh originally from kailua okay yeah yeah east side huh yeah east side yeah went to kailua high school did all that and uh, -huh. uh but traveled everywhere too i've uh, been to oregon lived in seattle for a bit in san diego northern california uh, and then um decided to move back home so yeah everybody uh, it feels like as i've talking you know i'm talking to folks everybody goes and gets uh, sometimes their education and uh, get some job experience on the mainland which is helpful and and yeah. uh and then come they want to come back home but there was i was just reading an article though that there's like ten thousand. uh we had a net loss of ten thousand folks this last year you know coming leaving the island just probably because of you know covid and expenses and jobs and all the different things yeah. that are happening so yeah. uh well, I mean, lots of opportunities. I mean, uh, have you thought about moving to the mainland or is home um, home? I mean, I, I, yeah, no, I mean, no, this is home for now. Yeah, not. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm pretty much making this home because I, I did. Yeah. I did the whole, you know, stint of like living. I think the most was seven years in Northern uh -huh. California. And I just got too homesick. Yeah. Love the I and mean, just love the people here. And yeah, I'm going to ride it out. I know it's, it's cost of living so high, but it's just yeah, it's it's just part of it's just part of Hawaii. You know, it's just part of what yeah. we, it, we other people look at it from outside and they go, oh, how does that all work? But I guess, you know, we can make it work uh, uh, yeah. somehow here. 
Yeah, I need to. Focus on your health and, you know, just keep going. Just That's right. Moving. And so I'm glad, we're glad you're not moving to the mainland because we need uh, smart guys like you uh, helping us stay healthy and uh, keeping things in perspective. So uh, we'll keep uh, sending folks your way to F45 Kahala. And uh, that's where you're the studio uh, coach, but you're also uh, a studio manager, but you're also uh, the one in uh, Kapolei. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Kapolei as well. Okay. Yeah. And then we yeah. just open in Ala Moana too, yeah. So. Ala Moana. Okay. So, yeah, lots of options there for folks in town and uh, – and then all the way on that uh, side over there. But uh, so, yeah, uh, look them up easy, real easy, F45 Kahala. And it shows, uh, and Jason's your first contact. There's, if you call the place, it's Jason. It's gonna, you're going to get a hold of Jason. So that's what's nice, too. Absolutely. I'll hook you up. <laughs> all right. That's, that's right. And, hey, uh, what better thing to do if you made some goals for 2022? Get out there and, and uh, start marching on them. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. So as yeah, far as, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I said we know firsthand. It's not like that's right. Saying. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, um, parting words. Anything that you know as your uh, you know people who are coming up or trying to you know rebuild in 2022. Anything to say? Uh, yeah, I would just say just keep your focus on your passion, and uh, it doesn't matter you know what gets in the way if you're passionate about it. You know, like the the question, what gets you out of bed, right? You know, it's right. just you're gonna focus on. Um, something that moves you, you know, uh, right. whatever that, that is. And for me, you know, I'm thankful that it's something that I love to do. It's, it's um, basically transforming people's lives, you know? So absolutely. Yeah. I, I titled my own title, transformational artists. <laughs> well, Hey, because you can see somebody come in and then literally within two weeks, they're just, it's, it, there's a glow on their face and that's, you know, they're, you know, it just from, finding something that that fits them you know and uh, same thing with jujitsu uh-huh. uh, it's building it, this this inner courage and and that that maybe some people didn't know about you know and right. so it yeah your lives can be transformed for sure well yeah you know how what kind of transformation it has for your life and so then being able to share that um uh, you know it's amazing so again get in get in and see jason plus all the great coaches that are there at uh, f45 and uh, uh until then jason uh aloha Hello, David. Thanks, brother. All right. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk soon. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Make sure to subscribe to Hawaii Boss and follow us on social media at Hawaii Boss Podcast at the links in the description. We'll see you soon in the boss's office.